Hello, my name is Alasso Treveser, and I'm here to give a little tutorial on the main UI panel for Tab Groups Helper. Tab Groups Helper is a, a Firefox add-on designed to help you manage your tab groups. And if you've watched the introductory video, um, you'll, you'll al already have an idea of the overview. And if you've watched that, you've been introduced to the, um, the Tab Groups Helper Toolbar button. And so when we click on that, we see Manage Groups. That will open our main UI panel. This, uh, from this panel, there are a lot of operations can be done. This is, um, this is kind of the heart of the matter here. If you on the first time opening, what it will the default opening the default uh, view it will open to will be a a new group starter along with your current group. Now from this point we can start building our um, we can start building our panel. Um, this can be done done a number of ways. You notice at the bottom of this drop down. Up here, first of all, let's uh, mention up here is an o what we call an open button. Um, this shows some various options and also ways we can open up more columns to display more more of our groups. So in our in our in, in our um, configuration here, we have uh, four groups. These groups. Um, by the way, I'll just mention these groups could have been started in Panorama without even Tab Groups Helper. Uh, as I said, uh, have said in the past, Tab Groups Helper is just merely a UI for uh, the default Firefox Tab Groups mechanism called Panorama. So if we want to add a column that has our More Stuff group, we just click that. We want to add another column that uh, that shows our anything group, we click that. Um, we can remove columns just by clicking on the X button. And I want to stress that this will not close the group. The group's still there. This just shows, uh, this just changes the view and what columns are, show, are shown. There's, ne there's never uh, any less than two columns. There always has to be at least two columns or more. So you'll notice when it gets down to two columns there, the X, little X close buttons will disappear. Another way to display our groups, if we just want to show them all, there's a little option here, show undisplayed groups. Since there's three of them that are undisplayed, it will show the other three. Basically, it will show the remaining groups that are not displayed. When the, when the uh, number of columns gets uh, too wide to be shown, in the panel, you, a little scroll bar will sprout up. We can change the maximum width of the of the um, panel just by grabbing onto it here. And let me, let me show you a little trick about this. I'm going to close uh, several of the groups, and so you'll notice that the the panel will never be wider than is necessary to show the groups. This is just um, simply to conserve space. You know, if a user clicks off groups, there's no point in having empty space being shown over here. So now when we, when we um, drag our panel wider, it's stressed that we're, we're not setting the width of the panel per se. What we're setting is the maximum width. So in other words, if we let it go here, this will be the maximum width that the panel will go. So, and you'll get a little indication of that. And it will spring back to, again, only show real estate that matters. But now, if we start opening new groups, um, they'll keep expanding until we get to that point. And uh, it, will, it won't get any wider than that. That may sound a little confusing at first, but um, uh, you get the hang of it. We can, uh, there's no limitation on what kind of uh, groups are, are shown here. In other words, um, we can show the same group over and over again. 
and there's there's an advantage to this actually that I'll I'll get into later when it comes to moving tabs. Okay, um, we've so we've covered that. We've covered showed undisplayed groups. Um, if there isn't a new group starter already showing uh, revealed, we can click start new group, and it will give us a new group starter. It only lets us do that once because there's no point in having more of them. We can also start a new group by clicking new tab and new group, and this will actually create a new group. Um, if I can back up here, this new group starter is simply a stub. We haven't actually created a group there. Um, so uh, let's start a new group, and we can do that simply by dragging a tab from one of the groups into the, the stub, and uh, the menu will update immediately. It's given it the default name of new group uh, 320. 320 happens to be the internal ID of the of the group, which is a unique ID. We can now rename it simply by editing the title here, and we'll call it new group test. And so that's what the name will be now, and that will be reflected in our menu here. Okay, again, back to new tab and new group. This will just create a new group forthright. Again, we could rename that if we wanted to. And, uh, and it'll just create uh, a new group with a, a blank tab in it. Um, we can switch our groups. Uh, we'll, we'll show, you can see the tabs bar here. If I click, click on this bar here right below the title, um, we'll switch what our current group is. And you can see the tabs bar reflects that. That's our loan autonopedia. This is our loan new tab. We'll go back to that. Okay. S having a little problem with my mouse here. Um, this little button here will arrange the groups in the groups order. That uh, groups order was talked about here. Um, in one of the other videos where you can um, set your groups order for all of the different UIs. So now you'll notice um, that's the way we can uh, start new columns and close new columns. Now you'll notice there's a switch here. If we want to, we can just use an existing column rather than, rather than starting a new one. And uh, we can just switch this to whatever group we want. More stuff. So that pretty much covers that part of it. Um, the next part to cover would be multi-tab moves. You can select several tabs here. Just simply drag them over to the group that you want to insert them in. You can see the red line will insert those tabs at that point in the group. So we put them there instead of just sticking them at the end of the group. Um, whenever you do a multi-tab move, you can undo that move um, by context clicking on any of the, any of the um, columns and click undo last move there. Things are a little slow because my screen capture program is a little bit resource intensive. Uh, we can also select several tabs and if we context click we can close selected. Again uh, we'll get, get uh, the option to undo. One thing on these undos that you have to be aware of is um, you can't let too much uh, water flow under the bridge after you make a move um, before using your undo because if you make any changes which alters the order of the tabs or, or, or how many, what closed tabs or anything like that, your, that undo option will disappear. So you need to catch your mistake right away if you're going to and, and undo it right away. Um, we can also select several tabs and bookmark selected. 
Um, apparently, we have already made a bookmark uh, with with this name, and so uh, it's giving us an option to append it with um, the with a timestamp or just simply replace the the uh, group uh, folder and which will wipe out the old one. I'm going to append it. I'm going to click append which will give us append the date. And so we have more stuff which was the first time we did this. More stuff uh, selected and this um, this will give us the name of the title and also selected which indicates it's not all the, the tabs in the group but only the ones we selected. And these are barely on the viewport, but you can see me hovering over which uh, tabs were bookmarked. We can delete a group, and that will give us a prompt in case we're trying to delete a group that has a high number of tabs, and we may not want to do that. This, this operation can't be undone from here, so um, you need to make sure you know what you're doing. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and delete it. And now you can see our group count has gone down one. So, uh, I believe that about covers it for those operations. The next thing to look at would be our search. Um, we can type in uh, some keywords and it will search it will search all of the groups if our all button all uh, checkboxes uh, checked if it's unchecked it will only search the current group which is the current group we're currently using in the tabs bar um, this button determines this checkbox determines whether it checks will search within the content of the tab. Um, otherwise, un otherwise, it will only check, uh, search the title of the tab and the URL. If content is checked, it will also search title and URL, but it will also, in addition to that, search content of the group, excuse me, content of the tab. Should be noted here that it can only search content in tabs that have been loaded. If a tab isn't loaded, there isn't any content to search. So um, keep that in mind. So this gives us a quick way to search uh, for if we, for whatever, whatever reason we want to search. The nice thing about this is that we can actually move tabs directly from our search uh, view. It, we can. Um, select a couple here, move them to another group, and that undo will, um, you can also undo that operation as well. Um, one more little thing to cover, uh, I guess that covers it for the search, uh, search window. One more thing to cover is uh, just a handy little thing to keep in mind is we can, as I meant briefly mentioned before, we can have two of the same groups. This makes it nice if we want to move several tabs um, side by side in within the same group. Okay, this may not seem like a big deal in such a uh, small number of tabs, but if you had a group with 100 or 300 tabs um, where you're moving them, say, from way one end of the uh, tabs bar to the other, you could find this advantageous. I think that pretty well covers it uh, for uh, the groups, um, for the, excuse me, the main UI panel. One quick little thing to mention is hold Alt key to insert a beginning. If we hold down our Alt key and we click one of the, the groups, it will insert it at the beginning instead of, at the beginning of the group, um, of the panel instead of at the end in its default position. So uh, I may have missed something, but this should give you plenty to chew on. I thank you for watching the video.